God. Lord, you're in control, mighty God. We give you praise. We give you the honor tonight, Lord. We say, have your way in Jesus' name. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son and now let the week to your name we save honor to your name yes lord oh lord honor to your name oh lord for your name is great and greatly to be One more time, we give honor, we give honor to your name. Oh, Lord, honor to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is and great be to be want to praise you. God, lead my hands and say, I love you, because you are everything to me. And I exalt your holy name on just want to praise him. We declare. We sing, I just want to praise you. Lord, lead my hands and say, I love you because you are everything to 
to me and I exalt your holy name on high. Just one more time I declare to the Lord we sing I sing I just want to praise you Lord leave my hands and say love you because you are everything to me and I exalt your holy name on high so today with everything that God has done for us we say thank you Lord I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. Sing with me. We say thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. I love him. I sing love you. For my hands tonight and say, We praise you, Lord. We praise you, praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. Just one more time and declare, I praise you, Lord. I praise you, praise you, Lord. I say I praise you, Lord. I just want to praise you. I just want to just magnify his name tonight we thank you tonight for your presence God we thank you that we want to praise you for all you have done your mighty acts oh God for your wonderful your glorious almighty God we praise you because almighty God you are our God tonight father and there is no one like unto you tonight we bless your name hallelujah we give you all the glory and all the praise that is due to your name tonight hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. 
more and more Come live in me All my life Take over Bye. 
take your plans Cause you are my world You are my God And I lay down my life for you can thank him tonight that he's your world tonight. He's your everything tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We know he's your everything tonight. Amen. Yes, you are. So we are grateful tonight to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. God is wonderful. We thank the Lord tonight. Amen. That he's our world. Amen. He's our everything tonight. Amen. I just want you to go around as a couple of us here tonight, and I just want is is refuel Wednesday night. Amen. We come, and I thank God for you to making a sacrifice to be here. Amen. We just want to give God praise tonight for all that He has done. Hallelujah. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the love. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to me. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love to your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth. From the earth to the cross, my death to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my death to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. From the heaven. I love to sing his praise tonight. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my death to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth. Come on, lift your hands tonight. Amen. We glorify the name of the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen tonight. We just sing one more song before we have to speak tonight. Because 
was a fool You are how you The food you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I believe my voice and sing, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are, sing it again. Because of who you are, I give you glory. My friends and life because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Jireh, my I worship you because Lord we worship you because of who you are Jehovah Jireh my provider yes he is Jehovah Nisi Lord you reign in victory Jehovah Shalom I worship you because Lord I worship you because Lord I worship you because of who you are Jehovah Jireh my provider Jehovah DC Lord you reign in victory Jehovah Shalom, you're my prince of peace, and I worship you because, Lord, I worship you because, Lord, I worship you because of who you are, because of who you are, I give you glory. Of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and sing. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I worship you because, Lord, I worship you because of who you are, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom, you're my prince of peace, and I worship you because, Lord, I worship you We got a reason tonight. I worship you because, Lord, I worship you because I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because, Lord, I worship you because. We got a reason tonight. We could just lift your hands. I got a reason to worship the Lord tonight. 
Father, I thank you tonight, amen, for your goodness. For all of the, us who come from the Caribbean, so many people in Trinidad last night, amen, was crying out to God, amen, because our nation, amen, experienced our whole country and even in the neighborhood from toxic relationship. Walking away from toxic relationship. How many can say amen to that? I said, the Holy Spirit will have me to share this. Amen. Walking away from toxic relationship. Let's bow our head tonight as we ask our Father to, to help us tonight. Almighty God, your word tells us, those who have air, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord have to say. Unclog our air that we will hear what your Spirit is saying clearly. Minister to our hearts tonight through your word. God, let the word that comes out of my mouth to God of my heart, Lord, minister to your people today. God, I pray, Almighty God, through this word, you'll give us understanding. And I pray, Lord, that we will do what we have to do, O oh God, to walk in a way from toxic relationship. Amen. So I pray tonight that you will have your way among us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And everyone say, Amen. Let me start by saying tonight, amen, that how many know that the Bible tells us that we are responsible for working out our own salvation. And the Bible said that we must work out our salvation with fear and trembling. When you give your life to Jesus, yes, you are saved, but you got to work out your salvation because there's not one saved, always saved. Now you're responsible, amen, for walking the walk. You're responsible for the choices. You're responsible for the decisions that you make. Amen. You have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That means to say there's some things that in your walk with God you have to get rid of. There's some things that you've got to dispose of. There's things that you have to interject into your life. And there's something that you just got to get rid of. And so it's like you like cleaning a house or get into a new house. And so you got to take care of it. And so the Lord said to us tonight that we must, amen, get rid of some stuff in our life. If ever we're going to make it or run our best race or reach the finishing line or the goal, then we are responsible, amen, because there will be things that will hold us back. There will not be only things that will hold us back from getting to our finishing line, but there will also be people. That people will come into your life, amen, to hold you back from reaching your finishing line. Yes. How many know what I'm talking about? So I want to break it down to you, and before I get into the, the, the text of that I want to use in the book of Amos, what is a, tox a toxic relationship tonight? A toxic relationship is any relationship that is unfavorable to you or others. So somebody says unfavorable. unfavorable. It is unfavorable. The foundation of any relationship that we're going to have healthy or not, are most commonly established tonight upon mutual admi admi admiration, respect, but can in time become remarkable, unhealthy. Because some relationships started good, and then after a while, it becomes unhealthy. I know what I'm talking about. It, is po it, it has a poisonous atmosphere about it that distinguishes a merely bad or troublesome relationship from a toxic relationship. Toxic relationship can prevent those involved from living a productive and healthy life. Can I say that again? A toxic relationship can prevent a believer, can prevent an individual from living a productive and healthy life. Somebody say toxic. When you think about toxic, it thinks about something that is poisonous. It think about some things that is dangerous. And the Lord is saying to us tonight, and what he wants to convey to us is that, that at times in our life, amen, in our journey, amen, there will be toxic relationship. You will enter into relationship probably not knowing, but it becomes toxic. And if we don't get rid of toxic relationship, it's going to hold us back from getting to where God wants us. And how many you could look, in your Christian life, or look in your walk with God, and you have come to know people. 
and you know them serving the Lord and they and they love the Lord with all of their heart and all of their soul but as they get into some type of relationship I'm not just talking about a relationship between a man and a woman it could be friendship it could be with people just being a friend and all of a sudden, just having that friendship, it looked nice at the beginning, but as, as you engage in this friendship, it becomes toxic. Because what happened is that that friendship or that relationship is pulling you away from the things of God. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. And that's the type of relationship that God wants us to, to, to look into and to get rid of those types of toxic relationships. Somebody say toxic. If I ask you tonight, and we're going to take a survey, are there unhealthy relationships in your life? And again, I'm not talking about, amen, man and a woman being in some type of, having that type of relationship. But are there people in your life that is toxic tonight? People that will hinder you from your progress with God. The Bible has... Give us, uh, how many know the Bible, amen, is written for man? And the answers is in the word of the Lord. And the Bible tells us that giving us advice over and over on how to and how to get rid of toxic relationship. And we want to engage in that and I want to help you here tonight and those who are listening. I want to help us tonight because in my own walk with God, I have seen people in the church today. I have seen people, amen, get attached to other people and that relationship, may, they probably don't know, but one who is looking from the outside can see that this relationship is unhealthy. You can see this relationship is very toxic because why? Anytime, amen, and let me say it like this, when God wants to bless you, when God wants to bless an individual, how he's going to do that? I have found out from my own experience and from the word of the Lord and in my walk with God, when God wants to bless you, He sent a, an individual into your life. Amen. When God wants to bless you, hear me now. When God wants to bless you, He sent people into your life. Amen. When the devil amen, wants to destroy you, somebody said the devil. Yeah. When the devil wants to destroy you, what does he do? When the devil wants to destroy you, he sends people also into your life. So here is the comparison now. When God wants to bless you, God will send people in. When the devil wants to destroy you, he will also send people. So how are we going to differentiate who is godly and who is sent from the devil? I have shared this some time ago. That people tonight, if you want to know who is the godly people that God has sent to bless you, and those who are sent to destroy you, let me put it across like this. People act or is sent to be walls and gates. Somebody say walls, walls. and gates. So when God sent a person into your life to bless you, they're going to serve as wall and they're going to serve as a gate. When, they see the, when the blessings are coming to you, they are on the lookout. When they see the blessing come to you, they act as a gate. And they open the gate so the blessings can come to you. When evil or things are coming to harm you, the same individual that God sent in your life to bless you, when they see evil or when they see things that is going to destroy your life or harm you, they act as a wall so it cannot come to you. That's when you know that this individual amen, is serving God's purpose because they have come into your life to be a blessing. Somebody say blessing. How will you know that the devil has sent people? Because they act as well as gates and walls. But the problem is when they see the blessing coming, they shut the gate. In other words, they become a wall. So the blessings do not come to you. They want the blessing for themselves. There are people who don't want to see you blessed. They don't want to see you have a good job. They don't want you to be better than them. They always want to be above you so they can look down on you. 
These are the people that will act instead of being a gate for the blessing to come. These are the people who act as a wall because they don't want you to be blessed. And also, when bad is going to come, instead of being the wall, they be the gate. Because they want you, they want you to be destroyed. They don't care about you. That is why I've said from time and time again, when we have to evaluate the relationship that we're in, or any relationship that you're pursuing, and again, I'm not talking about a husband and wife or boyfriend, girlfriend type of relationship. I'm talking about overall, that we engage in people. I always say this, go where you're celebrated and not tolerated. Because in this world that we're living in, amen, people might tell you they're a friend, but they're only tolerating you because only what they can get from you. You are more concerned about them than they're concerned about you. You are doing more to call and to find out how they're doing rather than calling you. They really don't want you wrong. They just tolerate you. And many a times we're running after these relationship and don't realize that these relationship is toxic relationship. And there are genuine people who want to celebrate your life, celebrate you for who you are, amen, and to encourage you in the ways of God, but somehow you don't want to be with that type of individual. Hallelujah. Or the devil blind your eyes so that you're more focused on the toxic relationship. Let me say toxic relationship. There are several types of relationship that is a liability and not assets to mine. And if we as a church or we as individuals are going to develop healthy relationship, you must first cut off the unhealthy ones you have developed. Some say cut them off. Cut them off. How can you tell if a relationship is toxic? And I want to help the church to understand that today. Because too many people are getting into relationship and that relationship is toxic and it's pulling them away from the Lord. When you should be in church, they're telling you to come do something else. When you make a stand for God, they don't want you. They encourage you to do things that you know you shouldn't do. Somebody say amen. amen. And how many times we love those type of We love to be around those people because something inside of us still gravitates to those things. Anytime you want to be around people that is doing the things that you know you're not supposed to, it's because you yourself have not surrendered totally. God, you will say, well, I surrender all to Jesus, but there's part of you have not surrendered. And anytime that part is not surrendered, when there's a gathering or something is happening, that part of you that is not surrendered want to be in the crowd, want to be in that type of relationship. Hello, somebody. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. Toxic relationship. So if we're going to develop healthy relationship, then we got to cut off the unhealthy one. Here is three things that I want to help you with to understand how to get rid or how you can know what is a toxic relationship. The first thing that we could look at is there where anytime there's toxic relationship, there is going to be... Constant strive and division. There will all be constant strive and division. First, there will be constant strive and division. The book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 3 tells us and it asks us the question, can two walk together unless they agree? If two people are not agreeing, can they walk together? No. When it comes to relationship, the Lord says... That's why when we apply this into relationship tonight, it is imperative to understand this. If we are going, if people are going to get married, if people is looking for a mate, for someone to settle along with, make sure it's somebody, amen, tonight that is compatible. Somebody that shares the value that you uphold in your life. Because any time that you yoke with somebody that don't share the values of the scriptures that you believe, amen, it's going to be a, stri a constant strife and division in the relationship. Because one person wants to go left when you want to go right. 
And therefore, when that relation, it starts to become toxic because now you have to compromise your life or what you stand for because you want to be in good relationship with your fiancé or with your husband or wife or some friend because why? You, you desire the relationship. That's why it is important tonight. Two have to walk together in agreement. And that's why we could know. And that's why we have to come to a place in our life are we totally surrendered. Because if you're not totally surrendered, then when certain things is going on in the environment that you are in, you will, there will be a pull towards that. And then first thing when people see you acting out what is inside of you, first thing they will judge you and say, I thought you were a Christian. How can you be engaging in things like that? Because this, the, the mindset is that you're supposed to be surrendered. You're not supposed to be indulging in things like that. But what they don't know is that there was a part of you inside is reserved for you. There are some secret things that people hold on to and they never give over to God. That's why Christians today who are struggling with certain sins and certain things in their life is because they have not surrendered totally to God. Can I hear him in this tonight? A healthy relationship is one in which there is oneness of goal. There is purpose. There is values and belief tonight. God's word says, where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. So when you have this type of relationship, how many know it's going to cause strife and division? The Greek word for confession means unstable. How many know what is something that is unstable? The Bible tells us in the book of James chapter 1 and verse 8, it says a double-minded man is unstable. Somebody say unstable. Uh, unstable in all his ways. Nobody wants to be in a relationship that is unstable. You don't want to hear somebody tell you, I love you now and tomorrow I don't love you at all. Relationship that is un un uh, double-minded. Unstableness tonight. The situation, in the other words, is out of order and therefore out of control. Nobody wants to be in a relationship that is out of control. How many know God is a God of order? Amen. He's a God of order. He has set up lines of authority. And when those lines are violated tonight, the door is open to every type of evil spirit. How many know God has set down uh, laws and, and he, has, uh, he has put down things in place and when it is violated by individuals, they are opening up the door for evil to come in. Pastor, I don't know why this is happening in my house. I don't know why this is happening in my home. I don't know why this is happening to me. Then we got to check to see if they along the way in our journey, have we violated God's authority? And if we have violated God's authority, then evil spirit is going to come. All types of evil spirit is going to come. You don't get to choose. Somebody say you don't get to choose. You and I, if we, we disobey, if we violate God's authority, we don't get to choose the brand of evil spirit you want. You don't get to choose that. The evil spirit is going to come in. When you get out of line with the way God has designed things to work. Hear me, and I say this tonight. When you get out of line, the devil has the legal right to touch you with any form of evil he wants to. Because when you get out of line, darkness is going to prevail. And how many know the devil dwells in darkness? So if your heart and mind is darkened, how many know, amen, the devil is going to come in and you can't chase him out because he have a legal right to live or dwell where there's darkness, the line. Where there's ignorance, he's there. And that's why we must understand that we should not just take it loose because there are people who are violating, amen, they're violating the, the authority that God has set in motion and they don't care. And they believe all they could do is go before God and repent and everything is going to be fine. When people violate amen, God's word and the, and the things that he has set in motion, they are opening the doors 
for demonic amen, activities to come into their life. That's how serious it is tonight. Strife and confusion. When there's any relationship that, that has strife and confusion, how I many know that relationship is going to sap your enemy energy and drain your creativity? There are people who in toxic relations, they're not happy. I have a friend, I have a man, I have a woman or whatever, but they don't have no joy. It's sapping out their energy. There's, they have no joy in their life. There's no beauty. It's just like dryness. It's why? Because strife and confusion sap your energy and drain your creativity. They take your focus off what God has for you. And anytime you're in a toxic relationship, it's going to sh cause you to shift your focus. It's not about God anymore. You'll take a look and, and look at people. If you don't want to look at your own life, look at people that you know. And look at people who have, who have allowed themselves to get involved in toxic relationships and see their focus has shifted. The church is nothing to them anymore. Amen. The things of God is, is nothing to them anymore. They want the blessings of God. They will talk about God. They will talk about the blessings of God. But their heart is not connected to God. This is what toxic relationship does. It shifts your focus from the things of God. One of the most dangerous relationships is the one that holds you to your past. How can you be in a relationship that always talk about your past? There are people who always remind you of your failures. Always remind you of things when you mess up. Amen. Somebody say toxic relationship. You don't want to be in a relationship that people are always remind you of your past. And your mistakes and so forth. The Bible tells us that when Jesus went to his own country, he taught, and the people were astonished. But they were also offended at him because they kept saying, isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't this the son of Mary and the brother of James and Jose and Simon and Judas? This is what they're saying. He can't possibly have all this wisdom to do these mighty works. We know him. This is what they're saying. We know Jesus. He's just one of us. And Jesus could not do no miracles there because of their unbelief. He couldn't do anything. It's not because he can personally, but because of their doubt and unbelief, there was no miracles. It wasn't that Jesus has lost any power in himself. He wasn't any less of who he was in his home country. Those people had... I mean, unbelief and doubt in their heart. It was, it was because of that tonight. Their unbelief that he could not manifest the fullness of himself. And you can get it in Matthew chapter 13 verse 53 to 58. And you will see, the, get the gist of what, what the passage of scripture is saying. Because people doubted. They had unbelief and there could be no miracles. The association of your past can drag you down and hold you back. When people start to talk to you about your past and stuff, how many can pull you down? It can discourage you. Because you think it, it was all over. But here it is somebody come remind you of your past. Those type of relationships, I mean, it pulls you down. They can keep you from fulfilling your potential. And that's why it is imperative or important tonight to understand. If we're going to go forward in our life, we need to get rid of toxic relationships. I'm not talking, of course, about a relationship that you have entered within a covenant or a relationship that God has ordained for your life. You can't, and I'm saying this, you can't just casually walk away from your father or mother or a spouse or children. You can't do that. I'm talking about friendships. I'm talking about business association, casual acquaintances, distant relatives and who remind you continually of what people used to think of you. Maybe, yes, I did mess up in the past, but that was the past. But they keep bringing it up. Because in other words, they want to put you down. They want you, you have your head lifted up because the Bible tells you that, that God is a lift of your head and you're lifting up your head and you're walking your, your journey and you're going forward in your life. But these people come and they keep messing you up. Now, instead of lifting your head, amen, 
you're looking down. Somebody say toxic relationship. Those old opinions that were not God's opinion are opinions that do not relate to your tomorrow. They relate only to your yesterday. But God don't have to look at your yesterday to determine how, how, you're going, how he's going to bless you in your present. God don't consult your past. God loves you as a person tonight. And God does not bring up your... Could you imagine if God were to bring up your past? Everything that you did. All the mistakes that you made. All the evil thoughts that went into went through your mind. Could you imagine if God would bring up... That is not God. God said he will take our past and truth and see your forgiveness never to remember anymore. He said if you confess your sins tonight, he's willing and just to forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God will remind you of your past, beloved. The devil will remind you of your past. Because the devil don't want you to look up tonight, he wants you to look down. So when opinions come, amen, those are not God's opinions. When people start to say things like, that is not God's opinion. That yes, relate to my yesterday, but I'm not living in my yesterday. I'm living in my today. Amen. So there will be constant strive and division. The second thing that we must understand, to understand toxic relationship, there's violators of the heart. These are relationships that prey on your heart, and rob you of control over your life. Let me say a practical statement tonight. Don't give power to any person to manipulate you and control you. And I find that many times we give people control of our own life. We give people power to manipulate us and control us tonight. Nobody deserves that type of power but God. Somebody say God. Don't give people power to control your life and manipulate you. God didn't design that. If you're going to surrender, submit, amen, submit to God. Don't let people manipulate you. Tell your neighbor, don't let people manipulate you. And let me say this to you also. Because sometimes we take this out of context and we practically say it. Oh, people make me do this or pick me. People make me lose my joy. No person can make you lose your joy, make you lose your mind, make you lose your temper or any other aspect unless you give that person the power. Amen. Don't do it. Tell the neighbor, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't give people that type of power. The most dangerous violators of the heart is a person who tells you what you want to hear there are people that will come into your life and tell you what you want to hear it's like a pastor correcting a person and he he loved them and he's correcting them from the word of god but they don't like what he says but somebody has come and tell him something different and tell them what they want to hear. In other words, we use our word, coax them. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they don't want to hear what the pastor says or not take their counsel from their pastor because they're listening to somebody who is telling them something who, what they want to hear. Somebody say toxic relationship. These violators of the heart, these people is the people who stroke your ego and tell you words of affection that you are desperate to hear and in all an effort to get what they want from you how many know they want something they want to get something from you so let me coax you you see like how remember the fox and the crow and when the crow had the cheese and the crow was up in the tree with the with this with the piece of cheese and the fox wanted the cheese from the crow a crow can't sing. But hear what the fox says. Tell and crow, you could sing like a nightingale. He's, in other words, he said to sweet talk the crow. And the crow really wanted to hear something like that. Nobody ever tell me that I could sing like a nightingale. All I do is crow. 
but the crow wanted to hear something. And from the moment the crow opened his mouth, amen, to sing like this night and get the piece of cheese fall off and the fox grabbed the cheese and gone with it. Somebody say violators of the heart. They will tell you what they want, what you want to hear in order to get something. That's why there's so much teenage pregnancy. Hello, somebody. Because guys will tell girls what they want to hear in order to get something. That's why here a preacher says, tell the young woman, no ring, no ting. Now you hear me? You'll be surprised today, and this is not just happening in the world. In the church also it is happening. Because violators of the heart, these people know what to say. Because the intention is to get something. And even we as people, we're not talking about relationship. We're good enough that if we want to get something from somebody, we know how to approach them. We know how to talk nice and, and do nice things because you know why? How many know we want something? Help me tonight. Am I speaking the truth tonight? So we know what to say. Violators tonight take advantage of the needs in your life. Especially the needs to be loved and accepted. That's why when it's a broken home. When it's a broken home. And people who come out of broken home don't feel loved and appreciated. That's why they, some of them end up in gangs. And end up being you know, what they, they become after that. Because why? There are people who manipulate that situation because they know they come from a broken home. They know they want to feel loved and appreciated. And they will say and do things just to get them where they want them. Somebody say violators. And these are violators of the heart. They ain't concerned about your blessing or your destiny tonight. They are concerned only about what they want. They are takers and not givers. They never lose your, your identity for another person's sake. Don't lose your identity. Never compromise your character for anybody. If you made a stand in your life, stand for the truth. We have a saying, a lingo. Don't rush the brush because you'll get dabbed. And anytime you rush the brush... Things are not going to fall in alignment the way that God wants it. Even in relationship, I tell people, if your relationship started in the flesh, it's not going to succeed. Anytime a man or woman just wants to get you in bed before they get married or anything like that, that relationship is not going to last. They take the honey out of the moon before they get to the honeymoon. And they don't realize when they do get married, the relationship don't last long. And they feel that the relationship was better before the marriage than when we got married. Because how many, how many know sweet, sin is sweet? And that's what is happening today. And nobody wants to stand, amen, stand for truth. How many times we have, I, have, I grew up with four sisters. And I know the things that my parents would talk to them about. About keeping them themselves. And so forth. How many know, remember those things that our parents used to teach us? But nowadays, it's not like that. You'll be surprised a person who's going to get married, they have multiple relationships before. Not everybody is keeping themselves pure in this time and age. Never compromise your character for anyone. You must continue to take an inventory of where the person is drawing more from you than the person is giving to you. Because you see, 
in relationship. We get ourselves in this toxic relationship and we believe that these people will change. I have people come to me for all the past 20 years I'm here pastoring and people say, Pastor, they're going to change. I'm going to pray for them. I love them. They're going to pray. Pastor, I will pray for them. They're going to get saved. But you see, if people are doing things in the relationship before the marriage, how many know it's just going to escalate when you do get married? So when you when you looking in or getting yourself in a relationship, make sure that the standards are there before. Amen. If you are accepting a man to tell you or call you a B I T C H. Before you get married, he might call you a DOG because you raise a higher standard when you do get married. What you tolerate before you get married, amen, it's going to take place bold when you do get married. So when, when they're taking advantage of you, when you do get married, it's because you encourage it. A healthy relationship is a relationship in which there is balance in giving and taking. Some say balance. Where there is mutual appreciation and a building up where there are honest words of appreciation without any taint of manipulation. Don't get in a relationship that people are just manipulating you. That's not a healthy relationship. That's a toxic relationship. Violators of the hand. The steps, let me give you some steps to cutting off unhealthy relationship. So what are the steps you must take to cut unhealthy relationship out of your life? How many want to know? Amen. The first thing that we must do is that we must identify and accept the reality of an out of balance relationship you must determine within yourself and know that this relationship is not balanced this relationship is out of balance it's like a seesaw in order to go up and down and it's like that nobody wants to be in a relationship like that you want it like this it must be balanced that's what balance is all about but how many relationships is out of balance? And, and hear me now, I'm not just talking about people together. Like man and wife. Or man and woman. Boy and girl. I'm talking about friends. They could be out of balance relationship. At times, we all, we need to take stock of the situation. And admit to yourself that the relationship isn't, is just not working some people don't want to admit that it's not working all your efforts at helping or rehabilitating a person have failed you did everything and you're still doing but you're not changing it's at that point that you need to give that person over to God. Somebody say give them over to God. Because you did. I have seen. I have counseled mothers. I have counseled people many. They have tried over and over and over. Doing the right thing. Trying. And still the individual will not change. The Lord said at that time. Give, it, give them over to God. Notice, I, say, I didn't say that you give them, give up on the person. I said, give that person over to God. To give up is to walk away and say, I don't care what happened to that person. God will not say that. As believers, how many of we are caring people? To give your person over to God is to walk away as you say, I have done all that I can do. And now I'm entrusting you to God from this point onwards. 
I leave you in the hand of God. I'm not going to try anymore. I've done all that I can for you or did for you, but now I'm not seeing your changes. I'm going to give you over to God. I care about you. I care about the relationship. But you know what? I've done so much and still nothing has happened. Now I'm giving you over to God. When you give your person over to Almighty God, you know what you are doing? You are releasing that person from your own heart to one who truly can heal the person. You have did all that you can, but you didn't heal. You couldn't. And sometimes we tend to take the place of God and feel that we can fix it. And we are messed up. And that's why we need to give it over to God. He's the one that can truly heal the person. He will never fail the person and who is totally qualified. You know God is totally qualified to counsel and guide and help that person. How many times can you tell, the, tell a person the same thing over and over and over again? You'll get tired. You get frustrated because why toxic relationship is sapping your energy. Some people have been praying, been prayed for, laying out of hands so often that your handprint are uh, indelibly printed on them and they haven't changed. You use so much oil and still they haven't changed. If you allow yourself to be drained and distracted by somebody you try, you truly cannot help because that person does not truly want your help. You're trying to help them, but they don't want to help. And we can accept that. All they need or all they want is your association. They don't want your help. Then you will not be in a position to help those who truly want your help more than they want your association. Because you can help a lot of other people, but your energy is so tied up trying to help this one person. But they don't want your help, they just want you, your company. They just want your association. They don't want to change. The second thing is, don't try to be God to another person. There's a huge difference between helping a person and carrying a person. First of all, we got to recognize that we are not the Holy Spirit. How many of we have a real Holy Spirit? He's a paraclete. He's the one that was sent by Christ to help humanity, to help those who put their trust in God. He will guide them, lead them, teach them, empower them. Don't enter into an enabling relationship in which you come to feel totally responsible for your personal success or failure. You're blaming yourself. Stop blaming yourself. You did what you can. But don't blame yourself. You're not God. And there are people who are blaming themselves because the other person didn't want to change. The other person is failing. You blame yourself. God said don't blame yourself. You're not God. Don't try to be God to another person. The third thing is become comfortable with criticism. If you do have to any relationship, not everybody is going to be happy with your decision. People might not like you after. Who oh, is she trying to be all of that? He trying to be all of that. They feel they're better than me. You will hear. Become comfortable with criticism. For that matter, not everybody is going to be happy with you at the point or regarding anything. You have to, you have to prepare for that. You've got to prepare for criticism. Amen. There's always going to be somebody who wants you to do something other than what God is leading you to do. Amen. That's why you have heard me say so many times, if people, there are people who are not going anywhere in their life and they want you with them. Amen. Especially if you're going somewhere. People who don't are not going anywhere, they want company. People are not doing anything with your life, they want company, they are miserable by themselves. So they want company and now you who God has orchestrated and put on a path to go a certain direction, 
you're leaving that now because you're feeling sorry for them. And you're joining them and instead of you become, amen, a voice to them, they become a voice to you. Because all of a sudden you start compromising your standards to please them. The devil is a liar. Amen. Am I helping anybody tonight? Amen. Nobody can please all people, all time, everywhere. I learned this at a latter state of my age right now. I've learned it the hard way. Some lessons you just learn the hard way. I've learned never to please people. I've learned only to please God. Amen. Because I found out in my walk with God, people love you today. Just like they did Jesus, Hosanna to the King. The next day they say, crucify him. I've learned to please God. My mission upon the face of the earth and my calling is to please God. And that's what we must do. Stop trying to please people with your life. Because you go please group A and group B vex with you. And now you're trying to make peace with group B. Now group A, they're mad with you. Why you end over there? Why you end to talk to them? And you're frustrated now. Because why? You're pull on either side. Live to please God. Tell your neighbor, live to please God. Luke chapter 6 and 26 tells us, Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophet. You think everybody speak good things about me? No. Even if I'm doing all the good. They're just those people who don't have no good thing to say about you. So in life, don't just feel that you must hear all good things that people talk about you. People are going to talk you bad. People are going to say some negative things about you. Don't make that a big deal. Occasionally you need to recognize hurting people sometimes hurt other people. And when people are hurting, they will hurt other people. Hurting people hurt other people. So somebody who hurting, they will say things that hurt you. That's just a fact. And you need to be brave enough and godly enough to say, this relationship isn't helping you and is not helping me. I hear me tonight. Trust God. Somebody say, trust God. We have to be in a place to trust God to help us recognize when a relationship is becoming detrimental tonight to your business, to your ministry, or the health of your family's life. You must know when the relationship is out of balance, when it's becoming detrimental, when it's becoming unhealthy. Because you, t you can tell when it's unhealthy. Because the same people you had had the night around you, now you're saying words in... in, in you're saying little words and snubbing and stuff like that. And you know it's because you are hurting. You, you, you want to tell them off. Because the relationship has become unhealthy. Trust God to give you the courage to end the relationship. Amen. Then trust Him to give you a broad enough shoulder. Thick enough skin. To take criticism that you may face for ending the relationship. Like when my friends and them, I, I used to go, well, as I said to you many times, I liked to go to the Latin clubs when I was younger. Like Spanish music, that was just my forte. But when I got saved, I had a lot of friends. When I got saved and make a decision in my life to serve the Lord, I had to end some of the relationship because it was not healthy for me to have a continued relationship. Because I was being pulled. And when I ended it, because I told him I love Jesus more. Why? The thing that they said to me, it was nice. But I had to endure the criticism. Because I recognized in order to go the ways of the Lord and do what God had me to do, I must pursue healthy relationship. Now I tried. I tried to talk to my friends. 
I tried to talk to them, but they wouldn't adhere to what I'm saying. They didn't want nothing about the Jesus thing. So we couldn't go down the same road. Now today, I still know them. I don't treat them bad. I see them. I do talk to them. But our relationship is not what it is before. And that's what the devil is using today. People come into your life to pull you away. And it's, it happens, especially when you start to get closer to God. When you start to get closer to God and get into a relationship with God and start to be your prayer life and stuff like that, all of a sudden, you know, the enemy knows when to send certain individual in your life. Think about your life and people who have come into your life. It's those people who come into your life and they could be godly people. And they, I mean, I say godly, they could be church people. But are they helpful in your life or they are put down? Are they helping you spiritually? Are they helping you accomplish your, your goals or not? And so that's we have to evaluate. If you're not at a place where God wants you and you have relationship, you've got to take an inventory if this relationship is right. If there's toxic relationship, we need to get rid of toxic relationship. The fourth thing. I know we just have about five minutes. Progressively and end unhealthy relationship. I say progressively. So it's not going to happen all at once. You have to do it progressively. It takes emotional energy to end a relationship. And if you cut every unhealthy relationship out of your life, at one time, you are likely to be overwhelmed by the loss. So you can't do it all at once. Somebody say progressively. You have to learn. You have to come to a place to cut unhealthy relationship out of your life one at a time until you can look around you and say, all of my relationships are the one that is pleasing to Almighty God. That's how we got to do it. Is this making sense? Is it helping anybody tonight? Because I want you to know it's not just sin that's prevent us from getting to the place where God wants us. Sometimes it includes also toxic relationship. Toxic relationship can hinder you from reaching your goal, from reaching or getting the place that God wants you to be. See, the relationship is that you would have these relationships, the people that you have in this relationship will be at the same, same wavelength. Those people who are close to you, they'll be at the same wavelength when it comes to values and beliefs and goals. You know how hard it is to, for you serve in God and want to be in church and do the things of God and you have people in your life don't care about that. It's hard, even for a parent. That you would want your children to serve the Lord. But how many know it's difficult to see them going a path away, straying from God? It hurts you inside. People are being pulled away. Even with children are because of unhealthy relationship. The fifth thing. I know i got to do this clip. I want to finish this. Don't burn the bridges. Write down if you're taking notes. Don't burn the bridges. Because when you and I develop, or when you dissolve rather, a relationship, don't dissolve the relationship in anger or bitterness. That's not the way to do it. That's the wrong concept to end the relationship with bitterness and, and anger. There's a way to walk away from, there's a way to walk away from relationship without words of hatred or criticism or the place in the blame. How many times people have walked away in anger and bitterness and hatred, criticism and placing of the blame? How many know that's unhealthy? At the same time, walk away from an unhealthy relationship with a full intent that you will not revisit the relationship in the future. God may lead you 
to have a relationship with that person down the line but you should not have the intent to come back to the relationship because you know it was toxic in the first place make a clean break make a definite break there may be a situation in which someone comes to you to break up a relationship allow that break to occur don't keep hanging on don't try to mend fences that are 12 foot high there are people that you trying to keep because you believe that you can win them over but you can't I've heard people and I'm saying this whether publicly and people listen I don't care because it's the truth there are people talk to, talk to other people about me in the worst way and they'll keep talking and talking and saying all kind of negative things and there's no truth in that and that person himself that person who's saying it don't have a walk with God but he will believe what that person is saying who don't have a relationship with God rather than one who have a relationship with God and preaching the word of God loving people telling people about the goodness of God we think that having those type of, of relationship is healthy is not healthy Amen. because those relationships are polluting your life Amen. Amen. and again amen tonight amen. allow the break to happen I have done it I, I, have, I as a pastor have tell people you want to go go straight cut go I don't pass them straight. I still talk to them, but I realize it's toxic relationship. We can't afford to keep toxic relationship because it will pollute and poison your life. Amen. When you're supposed to be happy and going to church and loving God, now your mind is filled with doubt. You question whether what that person says is true or not. Some say toxic relationship. If you continue to look back, you wouldn't be qualified or given the authority to possess what God has for you. Look ahead, don't look backward. Every time you look back, you begin to question, did I do the right thing? Let me say, don't look back. You second guess your today when you look back. You become hesitant about your tomorrow. Somebody say, leave the past behind. Move forward. Don't look back at what might have been or should have been or could have been look at what is still to be and that's why the last one as i started off with go to those who celebrate you people who care about you people who don't want anything from you but they just want to be a blessing to your life are you hear me tonight these are the type of relationship that we must we must hold on to why waste your life trying to get the attention or win the affection of people who don't care about you? You know there are people who don't care about you and you're trying to gain their relationship. Why make the effort to go where people merely tolerate you but they don't celebrate you? I'm here tonight to tell you, go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. Let me share one more story and I close with this. Jesus told a parable in which a man gave a great feast and he invited many people to come. And he sent a servant at the appointed time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. Can you imagine that? Jesus invited you to his party and you get the invitation. And now when the time has come, he sent a person to remind you everything is ready for you. And the Bible tells us one by one, those who were invited made excuses. One had brought some property, another a new yoke of oxen he needed to test, and another just got married. Hear what he's saying. In those things that people tend to value more than you today? That's the question. Because here it is, Jesus gave the invitation. But people are putting value on things rather than the relationship. One person has a business that he values more than you. And when you have something, you invite that person. It never showed up. You know, I was so tired. 
I was so tired I really couldn't come. But every time they have something, you're there and you're helping. They make an excuse. Another, a new car, a new boat, or some other new toy, or some value the person needs to, something that they have, they value more that they need to test out than accept the invitation. Another has a new relationship that is more important than the relationship with you. Are you getting the picture tonight? Find the people, find the people who are starving for what you offer. Because you have a lot to offer. You have a lot to offer. Find the people. Find people who want what you have, what you give, and what you celebrate. So that's why with me, I don't, I don't make fuss with nothing. I love people, and I will continue loving people. If you celebrate me, it's because I will celebrate you. And I will always celebrate God's people. But I'm finding people who will want what I have to offer. And that's what it's about. Because I don't intend to live my life with toxic relationship. Get rid of toxic relationship and see how free you would be. Because you wouldn't be able to please in people. You are please in God. And the people that who you have in your life will help you to get to finishing what God has called you to do. If you receive that, stand to your feet tonight. Glory to God. Somehow I feel good in my spirit. I feel good in my spirit. Can I preach to you? I preach to myself. Because sometimes as a pastor, you come to love people. And every person here becomes family. As a spiritual father, I, I consider you as my spiritual children. So you can, you can tell that I have a lot. A lot to give. I value people. But I don't want you to get, as in spiritual children, to get into toxic relationship. Amen. That most of all pull you from your relationship with Jesus Christ. But cause you to compromise your standards as a person. No relationship should afford you to compromise your relationship. Make a stand. If you love me, you're going to wait. If you love me, right, you will love the values. You'll love the things I stand for. Especially Amen. believers tonight. Amen. So let's bow our hearts tonight. <sighs> Gracious Father, I thank you for the simplicity of your word tonight. Oh God, every one of us, we have friends, we have people that we love, people that we would give our best for. Lord, in this teaching tonight, we are learning, oh God, Father, about toxic relationships. We know it's unhealthy. God, we know if we keep toxic relationships, our life will not succeed in any aspect of what you have called us to be. I pray tonight, God, that we will look into our life. And God, if there is toxic relationship in our life, we will learn, oh God, how to get rid of this toxic relationship progressively. Lord, I pray, God, that we will, oh God, Father, we will go where we are celebrated and not tolerated. Help us as we have shared tonight, O oh God, and we have defined who are the toxic relationship with and how we can get rid of it. I pray tonight, Father, give us the understanding and the ability to walk away from toxic relationship. Lord, I pray that you purify our heart. I pray, Almighty God, today, you have seen every relationship that we have come into. God, I pray if there's relationship that have come in that's sent by the devil, that God, that we will come to the understanding. And because of what was shared tonight, God, will we get clarity 
and understanding those who have come into our life that was sent by the enemy. Because we don't want people, oh God, to be a wall when it should be a gate when the blessing is coming. We want them to be a gate so they'll open the gate so the blessing can come in to us. We want people to be a wall when time to be a wall that when, oh God, evil or negativity is coming, there will be a wall instead of a gate. And so I pray, God, we have a definition, God, of what to look for in people who have come into our life. I pray, God, we will get rid of the toxic relationship. And we will hold on to those who celebrate us, O oh God. I pray, God, we will celebrate people. God, I pray tonight, God, help us in our journey. There will be no relationship that is attached to us that will pull us back from accomplishing our mission, O oh God, and all, uh, what we are about, O oh God, our Father's business. I pray today, help us, O oh God, to make the right decisions and get rid of the relationship that is toxic in our life and gain healthy relationship. People that with same goals and desires, O oh God, same beliefs. God, people who that will, O oh God, Father, help us and encourage us to pursue our goals and accomplish our purpose for our ex existence tonight. I pray tonight, touch every life here and purge us, O oh God, our heart today. Cleanse our minds and, O oh God, Father, today from everything that is toxic. And I pray, Almighty God, give us a renewed desire. I pray, God, Father, we pray that if you're going to send people, we act that you send people that will help us, O oh God in the way of the Lord in our life. Take away, help us tonight to get rid of toxic relationship, I ask. In no other name, but in the precious and awesome name of your son, Jesus. And let God